The Roman ruins of Troia are located in the Troia Peninsula on the left bank of the Sado River, directly in front of Stuval. They are part of the civil parish of Grandula. Its location allowed access to extensive maritime and fluvial resources. In the Roman era, this area was probably an island, identified by some as the Acala, mentioned by Avienius. This location was inhabited between the 1st and 5th centuries AD, standing under the administrative authority of the ancient city of Salacia, current-day Alcácer Usol. These ruins encompass an urban and industrial cluster dedicated to fishing and to the production and trade of fish sources, with Garum being the most celebrated. Garum was a very popular condiment in ancient Rome and was made with parts of some fish, tuna and mackerel among others, mixed with crushed smaller fishes, crustaceans and mollusks. This mixture was prepared and left for about two months in these sorting tanks, being then placed in amphorae and exported to the whole Roman Empire. These type of fish sauce production units existed in various places in the Algarve, Lisbon, Povod Verzin and Matuzinhos, but this one was the largest in the empire. To this day, 29 sorting workshops have been identified in Troia, comprising 180 tanks organized in rows around courtyards. The amphorae that were produced in workshops located in the northern bank of the Sado River were taken from here to places as distant as Britannia, Northern Africa or Lebanon. Next to one of the sorting workshops stands a mausoleum that has niches in its inner walls, intended for the placement of urns containing the ashes of the deceased. Outside the mausoleum there is a necropolis with several full-body graves. In the upper area behind the building there are also some chest graves. This location illustrates the two funerary rituals practiced in the Roman Empire, cremation and burial. The latter became common practice from the 3rd century AD onwards. This housing area became known as Princess Street after the first excavations done here, sponsored by the Princess Maria, future Queen of Portugal. Here we can observe the remains of a large house that was divided into several rooms and with some walls retaining their full height up to the first floor. During archaeological excavations carried out in the 19th century, some walls with mural paintings and floors with mosaics were found. Unfortunately, those elements were lost. Some important archaeological findings were made in the Troia Peninsula. 
The first dates back to 1814 and occurred after the collapse of a cliff that uncovered a lead chest. Inside, among other items, was a beautiful silver cup ornamented with depictions of plants, animals and objects. At the time, this find drew some attention from the cultural community. It was owned by the governor of Stuwal, then by the Duke of Palmela, and finally it was offered to Ferdinand II, who was very interested in history and art. After the foundation of the Republic in 1910, the track of this remarkable cup was lost for more than a century. It was rediscovered in 2017 in the reserves collections of the Ducal Palace of Villa Vissosa, where it is currently exhibited. Another relevant find that happened in 1925 was a Mithraic bas-relief that was part of a triptych of which only a section of the central panel and the complete right panel have remained. This object raises the possibility that a Mithraic temple existed in Troia. Mithras, a divinity of Eastern origin whose birth was invoked on December 25, was at the center of a mystery cult that spread throughout the Roman Empire until the 5th century AD. Between the 4th and 5th centuries AD, Christianity was firmly established on this location, a fact confirmed by the existence of a Paleo-Christian basilica and of various graves with Christian symbols. The walls of the basilica are covered with a striking set of fresco paintings. On the lower section they emulate marble plaques and on the upper part there are geometric patterns and occasional figurative elements such as flowers, birds and objects. In the 19th century, the famous Danish writer Hans Christian Andersen visited these ruins, mentioning it in his book A Visit to Portugal in 1866. There, he wrote, on the pier there were large fishing vessels. Whoever wanted to could travel to the Pompeii of Stubal, Troia, the fisherman village, buried but partially excavated. Wherever we sat foot on the ground there were large heaps of piled rock, remains of the ballast from ships that brought their loads of salt to the bay. Over the years, the moving tides exposed several Roman constructions on this bank of the Sadr River, along a stretch of one mile, revealing the true size of this settlement. The part of the ruins that is currently visible and visitable is only a small portion of the Roman Troia, which remains hidden under the sand dunes. Close to one of the salting workshops stood the baths that were divided into the usual sections. The hot area, caldarium, had an underground heating system. There was also a transition area with tepid temperature, tepidarium, and a cold area, frigidarium, with two small tanks, as well as a room for exercise and social interaction. Palestra. It is believed that these baths belong to the owner of this industrial facility, with one of the salting tanks having been converted into a dressing room, a poditerium, in the 3rd century AD. The Troia Roman ruins were classified as a national monument in 1910 and are included in Portugal's tentative list for a UNESCO World Heritage Site nomination.
Thank you for discovering Portugal with us. If you liked the video, please click on the like button and subscribe to the channel to follow our new releases.